and the Professor David Hall. David Hall is a visiting professor at the University of Greenwich, London, in the Public Services International Research Unit, of which he was previously director. He researches politics, law and economics of public services, public finance, public ownership, privatisation, PPPs and outsourcing. David, you have the floor, the, you, the floor is yours. Okay, good. Uh, the empirical evidence, however, suggests that that is very much not what happens, and I spent a happy day yesterday going through the accounts of um, uh, some of our distribution and transmission companies to check. Uh, and in fact, what happens is that we pay a lot of money in charges, which pay for the operating costs of the companies. We're talking national grid, we're talking distribution companies. The surplus after that, after the operating expenditure, is then used to finance all the capital expenditure. All the capital expenditure. The remaining surplus is then used to finance the financial costs of interest payments and so on. And then the shareholders, who you will have noticed feature nowhere in this story so far, then take dividends. Uh, this is uh, an absence of investment by shareholders. If you swept the shareholders out of the system altogether, which is what public ownership would do, we would lose no investment whatsoever because they're not investing money. However, they are taking money out, and considerable money. It's not often discussed. Uh, uh, somebody commented earlier it's not... Uh, the grids which are pushing up energy prices, but they are pushing up energy prices significantly by virtue of this private system. Uh, let's take UK Power Networks, for example, which Kat mentioned as having taken out nearly half a billion in dividends in the last two years. That covers London, the southeast, uh, and east of England, i.e. round here. Let's take National Grid's gas grid, and the electricity transmission grids, which between them took out, uh, I think, just about, I'm sorry, I've lost my original notes, uh, but about one billion in dividends this year. And their Western Power distribution, distribution subsidiaries, who took out a further 200 million. Just out of those companies, which still leaves untouched a number of distribution companies of gas and electricity, that's 1.8 billion in dividends over two years. A few years ago, we estimated, as Kat mentioned, that about 3.7 billion was being paid by us in excess dividends and unnecessarily high interest payments each year. Each year. That's the equivalent of over 100 pounds per household. That's the equivalent of two pounds per week, all of us every household in the country, is paying two pounds a week, which goes straight through the pipeline. It's a financial diarrhea. It goes straight from us to the shareholders. It's not used for anything, and they send nothing back, uh, which may be fortunate. I don't want to pursue the metaphor. Um, uh, so, uh, the loss on interest rates is because governments can always borrow money cheaper than private companies. And I'm very conscious that this is a terrible week to be making this argument. Uh, um, uh, but I suspect even at this worst of times, uh, the government can still borrow money uh, more cheaply than the private sector. Okay, so that's the real economic cost. That kind of cost uh, shows up elsewhere in the system and in other networks like water uh, as well. The other argument, however, because that argument is really about the cost of capital, and it's an argument that, for example, the IMF and the World Bank and the OECD all acknowledge, and they all say, okay, that means the private sector will always be more expensive because of the high cost of capital, but it has to be offset by the e extra efficiency. And somebody said, okay, so the private sector manages things more efficiently, doesn't it? Okay, there is now empirical evidence on this as well. There have been hundreds of studies, comparative studies on public-private sector efficiency over the last 24 years. There have been far too many. I say it personally, I've had to read most of them. Uh, fortunately, there have been a number of excellent meta-reviews. Yes? 
Mm. Yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a very good methodological point, but the conclusion, I think, is the opposite of the one you've drawn. Uh, people have made the point, and there was a, a detailed study of uh, privatizations in Europe and elsewhere, uh, which pointed out that the companies that have been privatized are, have, almost, uh, have almost always been selected as being the most profitable looking public companies and therefore the ones that got privatized were the best. And so study was done to adjust for that and what they found was that after adjusting for that, there was no significant difference. And that's the consistent result of studies across the energy sector, across all parts of the energy sector. There's a, there's a professor of energy economics here called uh, Michael Pollitt who was and still is a strong believer in privatization, but his own studies showed he looked at 790 different generating companies around the world, compared public and private, and the result was no significant difference in efficiency. Uh, uh, he then had a look with a colleague, uh, David Newbury, at the efficiency impact of the restructuring and privatization of the UK system. What happened? Uh, not much evidence of efficiency gains, but big shift in distribution. Shareholders made lots of extra money. Consumers paid high prices. Uh, in other words, from public's point of view, it was not uh, a success. Uh, Pollitt again did the study of the unbundling of the system into separate parts, which Andrew was talking about, uh, in the USA specifically, and found that there were serious negative impacts on the efficiency of the distribution companies after they'd been separated from generation. So even from supporters of privatization, the empirical evidence is acknowledged to show this has not worked. Uh, Newbury once put it, as uh, the, uh, the, uh, the evidence uh, requires sober reflection. In other words, we have made a terrible mistake. Uh, and uh, we're all uh, suffering as a result. Okay, I've got one minute left to uh, tell you a lot of other things as well, which I won't manage, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll do something. Um, so, uh, is the uh, project of public ownership uh, an unreasonable one, an unnatural one, a kind of fringe uh, project uh, by some extreme group of uh, people who are just not up to speed with modernity? Uh, no. Uh, as Kat said, actually public ownership remains normal elsewhere in the world. Um, I was looking earlier at a map of uh, a big survey carried out a few years ago, again by Pollitt, uh, showing all the countries in the world that had 100% all their electricity distribution companies privatized. And it showed, you could see on a, a simple picture of the whole world, there's the UK, there is Turkey, and there is Chile. Uh, and there is one other that escapes my mention. Everywhere else is a mixture or still publicly owned. Uh, these things are perfectly normal. Uh, in France, Electricité de France has been mentioned a few times. Germany has 900 Stadtwerke, municipal energy companies. These are normal. They generate. Not only do they generate in Germany, uh, Stadtwerke Munich uh, owns one of the biggest offshore wind farms in the UK waters. Huh? The public se sector companies of Europe generate our offshore wind uh, elect renewable electricity. So this is uh, perfectly normal. It's normal, it's not, it's not uh, universal in the US, it's not even majority in the US, but it is pervasive in the US. 
And one thing that the US doesn't do is it doesn't have our retail markets, our supply markets. Just, I just want to tell this story because uh, before most of you were born, I guess, in the year 2000, California celebrated by liberalizing its electricity and creating a retail supply market with competition, in inverted commas. Couldn't go wrong, could it? Uh, except that most of Cali much of California suffered rolling blackouts and power cuts for the best part of a year, the fifth biggest economy in the world being constantly closed down because a bunch of opportunist power companies saw the opportunity to operate a cartel and force power prices up. An economic disaster uh, of the first order. It had consequences. California said, okay, enough is enough. Every other state in the USA said, we are not going near the creation of a retail comp competitive market. And to this day, no one has moved in that direction in the USA. However, here in the UK, we are still stuck with it. It's time we abandoned this terrible experiment on ourselves and adopted a publicly owned, efficiently financed, and public, democratically driven, accountable energy system. Thank you very much.